Today's story is provided by Jenny from Germany. I am an airline stewardess by profession and a devoted family member by nature. When my sister became critically ill, I stayed by her side as much as possible. I felt immense gratitude that I could be there, holding her hand when she passed away from a devastating illness. Before my sister Jules passed over, we decided on ways she could contact me. One of the signs was feathers. After making the final arrangements for my sister, I had a flight to catch to a large city in Canada. That's when I got my first feather while flying. I noticed it after boarding the airline and I happened to look down while preparing for the flight to see the feather glued to my shoe, but I knew it wasn't there before boarding. My mother also found feathers appearing in strange ways too. After arriving at our destination city, I had a layover, so I decided to utilize my time by enjoying the beauty of that area. To find some peace, I decided to head to the English Bay. I sat contemplating life while an older man approached me. We started talking when tears suddenly filled my eyes and I began to cry while telling him about my sister and her death. We talked for about an hour and he shared all his life lessons with me. One thing he counseled me on was that sticks out in my mind was not to make life-changing decisions when you're emotionally charged or in a difficult place. After we left each other's company, I thought, Maybe this man was sent to me like an angel. I continued to walk. And when I came across a big meadow near Yale town, this sight blew me away because the field was filled with hundreds of white feathers. And I know this confirmed my thought that he was an angel. Then I felt like God gave me a humongous slap in the face again. I thought my sister's death shattered me to the core, but then I received a phone call that took my sorrow to an entirely new level. The voice on the other end of the telephone told me my mom had died. The news of my mom's death was devastating. She had been taken to the hospital and COVID restrictions were in place at the time, but we were allowed to see her due to it being such a recent loss that was not related to COVID. The exception to the restrictions allowed us to go to the hospital at night so that we could say goodbye to her. The doctor in charge was a young woman who lost both parents suddenly and unexpectedly, so she knew it was essential for us to say goodbye, which we appreciated greatly. The young woman's compassion and understanding were so astounding, we wondered if she was instead an actual angel more like an earth angel this time. As a family, we had a difficult life. While in East Germany, mom found a place that we could call home. And we lived there when the wall fell that separated East Berlin from West Berlin. Mom had a job in West Germany because all the employment opportunities had disappeared in East Germany. This caused her to have to shuttle back and forth for a while. My sister Jules was very talented and was accepted into a special music boarding school. She played the cello extraordinarily well. For me, after the wall fell, I experienced a culture shock. I wasn't used to the competitive nature of the, of the West. It was during this time frame that my parents' relationships started falling apart. With Jules in boarding school, and the difficulties between my parents, I begged my mom to let me go to my grandmother's place, and she agreed. My grandmother still lived in the same town as my parents, but I was out of the turmoil of the divorce. After the divorce, my mom seemed to grow and ended up living the life she wanted. Likewise, my dad became calm and easygoing, especially with his new life. Both found the partners they were more compatible to, and both became very happy. 
Our earlier story is crucial for you to know for the next part of my story that occurred the night my mom died. Our mom unexpectedly died on a Sunday at 1.30 a.m. And on the Wednesday before she died, we happened to have been taking a long walk together. With Jules' death still in our hearts and minds, we talked about how good and merciful a quick death would be. We even talked about one of the best ways to die, and we considered an abdominal artery burst the best because it would go fast. What is absolutely mind-blowing is that my mom didn't have any health problems or concerns before her death, and yet a few days later, she died of an abdominal artery burst, the same thing we discussed. I was destroyed when I heard of her death, and I lost all feelings for a time. I had trouble sleeping and was lying in bed that night, awake and exhausted, and I remembered it was not quite dark because it was still light outside, and when I suddenly witnessed my mom's life review. The review felt like it went on for hours. But time doesn't exist on the other side, and it does here. I viewed little movies and saw and felt my mother reacting to the situation. I was watching. I didn't sense that I was in a dark or in anything dark or in anything light. It was more like I was in a bubble with my mom in a heavenly realm watching these little movies with her. I'm not sure if the term movie is the accurate word. I can only describe it as witnessing the scenes as a third party observer, real life events. The events came so fast that I had difficulty keeping up with them. I was not detached and not calm because I was very emotionally involved. I was super emotional about what I was involved in and I felt everything exaggeratedly. For example, I could see how hard it was for my mom to grow up. My mother was born in 1952 as a child of a, of a Russian officer and a German mother, and she was bullied for that. She grew up poor because her family abandoned my grandma for being with the enemy after the war. I could feel the pain my mom grew up with and how sorry my mother felt for her little self. When I saw and felt this, I said, I am so sorry. I heard these stories, but feeling them was another level of compassion. I also saw and felt how hurt she felt for specific times I was rude and neglectful to her or for times I criticized her. I told my mom, I am so sorry, mom. I felt her hurt when I didn't talk to her for a year because I didn't know what to do with my life. I saw how hurt she was when I criticized her for not listening well enough because she had a little ADHD. But at the same time, I felt that my mom felt all was fine and that I loved her and that she loved me too. I could also sense that she wanted to judge herself for not being a good mom. She thought she wasn't a good mom because I went to school from 13 to 18 while living at my grandma's. There were many reasons for living there, but even though she felt troubled, I thought it was a good move for me. Living with my grandma allowed me to attend a superior music school and have the best time there. We both saw during the life review that after school, I struggled. While involved in, in the throes of these moments playing out, I told her, no, no, it's all good. You have been a great mom and made up for it later. She and I had our making up period from past difficulties and the time we missed together during my school years when I lived with my grandma. Being involved in the life review allowed me to tell her how much she has grown, how she became such a great role model in living her life fully with love and, and how staying active and positive was essential. I could also feel how much she missed her grandchild before death. 
Since my sister's death, my mom had only seen one of her grandchildren twice. Her visits were limited because my sister's husband and mother didn't get along well. My oldest sister, who has two children, was estranged from my mom too, and even though they got closer after my other sister died, my oldest sister couldn't make that step to get along with her again. However, my sister has since changed her views. I also knew my mom was given a choice to return to life. However, when she asked Source if she should stay and how her end of life would occur in the future, what she has shown is not what she wants. So that was when she chose to accept this version of departure. I cannot say that what was revealed as it was kept for me, but I could feel and sense her response to what was revealed to her, and I so I accepted her decision. I also can see there was a lot of compassion, love, and messages of being sorry in the life review. I cannot say I remember all the details of what I was shown because the flashing life moments came so fast, it was hard to remember them all. Needless to say, after my sister's death, I got feathers from my sister stuck to my shoe, then found the field of hundreds of feathers, and now witnessing my mom's life review, I was changed. I saw scenes where my mom was sad about being estranged from her children and not seeing her grandchildren as often as she would have liked. Again, I said, I am so sorry, Mommy. I could also feel at the same time that my mom now thinks all is fine and that all is good as it is, and that love was the overwhelming feeling between us all. I could also see scenes about her plans before she died. She had just found new love and planned many activities like vacation trips and art projects. I had just taught her twerking to strengthen her core, and I could feel her telling me this was okay. I was allowed to feel that she never wanted to die a long and painful death like my sister, and that an unexpected death always means that some intentions don't come to fruition anymore. I understood that it's essential to live life fully to the end. After seeing, feeling, and learning all I was taught through witnessing my mom's life review, my view of life, death, and spirit drastically transformed. I'm sure anyone could understand how a person would be so affected by these astounding events. I know my mom is still close by because a few days after my mother's death, I found a feather sticking in the backside of the undershirt I was wearing. When I saw the feather, I knew this was a message of love from my mom and probably my sister too. I can wholeheartedly say I was, will cherish every sign from heaven that I receive because our loved ones who have already transitioned from this life to the next are still alive and well. Everything I've shared, I consider a wonderful gift from heaven that helped me in untold ways. I hope my story will help others see life and death differently. And I'm hopeful that readers trust that when their end times come in this world, we will continue to live, but in a different dimension called heaven. Remember, dear listener, to subscribe and like, as life is a tapestry of moments, some mundane, others magical. And each click, each like, each subscribe is more than a digital gesture. It's a testament to our shared humanity, our yearning for connection beyond the boundaries of time and space. Thank you for being here. Bye.